From Washington, this is VOA News. U.S. Embassy in Yemen evacuated. U.S. lawmakers press Egyptians to end their political crisis. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. A U.S. military plane carrying diplomats is on the way to a military base in Germany at this hour after leaving Yemen on Tuesday. The State Department ordered the evacuation of non-essential staff because of what it calls the extremely high potential of a terrorist attack. It's issued a travel warning for Yemen and urges U.S. citizens who decide not to leave to limit their movements. VOA's Pam Dawkins reports. From his office in Yemen, one official of a U.S.-based relief organization says he's trying not to attract attention and asks that neither he nor his organization be identified. He is one of dozens of Westerners who are cautiously staying behind after the U.S. and Britain hurriedly evacuated the majority of embassy staffers. The official says he has no immediate plans to leave Yemen, but he is taking the warning seriously. We just stay home, stay out of sight, uh, away from public places, these kind of things. Meanwhile, Yemen has deployed hundreds of armored military vehicles to secure the presidential palace, vital buildings, and western embassies in the capital. Pam Dawkins, VOA News, Washington. Nineteen U.S. embassies and consulates in the Middle East and Africa will stay closed for the rest of the week. Syrian state media say a car bombing in a Damascus suburb killed at least 18 people and wounded 56. The bombing occurred Tuesday in the suburb of Jaramana. There's been no claim of responsibility. U.S. Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham are in Cairo joining international diplomatic efforts to try and defuse Egypt's ongoing political crisis. They met with Egyptian military chief and defense minister Abdel Fattah el-Sisi and other interim leaders, urging them to free Islamist figures from prison to begin a dialogue. Edward Uranian has more. Senators Graham and McCain told journalists that democracy is the only road forward and stressed that all Egyptians have the right to participate if they do so non-violently. Both urge the release of prisoners of the Muslim Brotherhood by the interim military government and Graham called for a quick return to national dialogue. In a democracy, you have to sit down and talk with each other even though you may not like the person on the other side of the table. It is impossible to talk with somebody who's in jail. Graham stressed that the U.S. did not cut off aid to Cairo because it would send the wrong signal to do so. Edward Uranian for VOA News, Cairo. Iran's newly sworn-in president says he is ready to engage the international community in serious and substantive talks on Iran's controversial nuclear program. In his first news conference as president Tuesday, Hassan Rouhani said it is the Iranian nation's utmost commitment to interact respectfully with the whole world and that Iran is ready for negotiations on its nuclear program. The United States, some Western nations, and Israel suspect Iran is trying to build nuclear weapons, a charge Iran denies. Iran says its nuclear ambitions are peaceful. The Afghan Taliban's reclusive leader is dismissing the country's upcoming elections as meaningless, but says the Taliban will not try to take over the country after foreign forces withdraw next year. In an Internet message, Mullah Omar described the presidential election schedule for next year as a waste of time and called on Afghans to boycott the vote. Mullah Omar is believed to be living in Pakistan. Pakistan's new government is reaching out to the United States, India, and Afghanistan, hoping to improve long, tense relations. Ayaz Ghul reports. In an interview with VOA, Pakistan's foreign policy chief, Sartaj Aziz, says Islamabad is welcoming India's outreach because it will help ensure a stable and united Afghanistan. India is 
India's uh, assistance to Afghanistan in the past to help build their infrastructure and some training uh, remains important and I hope they'll continue to do that. Such statements are rare for senior Pakistani leaders and many in both governments remain skeptical that Islamabad is open to increased Indian engagement with Kabul. But Sartaj Aziz says his country has a vested interest in seeing a successful Afghanistan and countries in the region should work together to support that goal. Ayaz Gulf, Islamabad. Former U.S. President George W. Bush had a stent successfully placed in his heart to clear a blockage in one of his arteries. Doctors performed the surgical procedure Tuesday after discovering the blockage the day before during Mr. Bush's annual physical exam. His office says he plans to resume his normal schedule Thursday. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News.